again in Jarwin. Hello everyone. I'd like to acknowledge that we're filming here today on the traditional lands of the Gumbangi people and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I'll extend that to respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people watching this film today. G'day, my name's Jane Eels. I'm one of the team leaders for the Local Land Services Riverbank Rehabilitation Project which is jointly funded by the New South Wales and Australian governments under the Disaster Recovery Funding Arrangements. The project is to build resilience of flood damaged riverbanks for future flood events. Today we're in Gummer Reserve in Maxville on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. We have Worrell Creek in the background which flows into the Nambucca River. Now you've watched the first video and understand the key concepts of river behaviour, We'll look at how that applies to some common erosion scenarios. In this photo, you can see that the trees at the bottom of the bank have been pushed over with the power of the flow and the entire surface of the bank has been sheared off or scraped away. This type of erosion is called scouring. It can happen wherever the power of the water exceeds the stability of the bank, but it's more dominant on outside bends where the banks are longer and wider and the water has to travel further. It builds up more momentum and speed than on the inside bend. The water is also deeper on the outside bend, so all these factors combine to create a corkscrew movement called helical flow, which increases the power on the outside bend and exacerbates the shearing or scraping effect of water on the riverbank. This photo shows erosion at the toe or base of the bank, which is often caused by the power of wind and wave wash lapping against it. It also shows a crack above the toe of the bank caused by a change in bank material, for example, coarse material and clay in the toe and a finer, more dispersive material above it, which is eroding away with the power of higher, faster flows. I can't see any rock at the toe of the bank, so it will continue to erode further back and eventually will undercut the material above it. Depending on the conditions and materials, the top part of the bank will then either slip down feet first, slumping, or topple over head first, called sloughing. The other factor that can cause slumping is when the bank materials are saturated after being inundated with water and there's a drawdown effect as the force of gravity pulls or sucks the water down and pulls the bank material with it. This can happen periodically with flooding or daily with tides. This last photo shows a severe case of gullying which is often caused by overland flow runoff. The waterfall feature in the middle finds a weak spot in the area of impact where it lands and continues to erode and move upstream. This is called a nick point or head cut. As it retreats, the banks collapse in on both sides. Stream bed lowering is similar to gullying, but it happens in the bed of a waterway. It's something to be aware of and to look out for. It's quite common in areas that have a history of dredging because the level of the riverbed has changed and is trying to find a new equilibrium. Now you know the common types of erosion and what causes them, the next video outlines a range of best practice actions you can do now.